Hey, hey, welcome back, folks. If you've watched my first three tutorials, you are just about ready to boot your Pi for the first time. So that's what we're gonna do today in this tutorial, and I'm gonna try to make this one pretty quick. So let's get to it. So in the last tutorial, we installed the operating system on the SD card. So let's go ahead and insert that SD card into the slot on the underside of the Pi. And the metal contacts for the card should be facing the underside of the board like this. Um, next, we'll need at least a keyboard and a monitor. So let's plug in the USB keyboard, and I also have a mouse here as well. Next is a Cat5 Ethernet cable that's going to my router. And then the next cable is an HDMI cable going to my monitor. And this cable is an HDMI to DVI cable since my monitor only has DVI input. Uh, and finally, the micro USB cable going to the 5 volt power supply. Now that it's plugged in, you should see the LEDs on the board start to light up. And the boot cycle has now started on the monitor. So let's take a look at the boot process for just a moment until we're ready for a login prompt. All right, now that we have the login prompt, you'll want to use the default username Pi, and the password is Raspberry, all lowercase. And that's it, you're in. Um, to start the desktop interface, you can use Start X. Let's do that now. So most people should be pretty familiar with how this desktop works. It's very similar to most other modern GUI interfaces. So let's take a quick look at what applications we have to choose from here. All right, so it looks like we have Scratch, which is kind of a, uh, it's a programming teaching tool. Uh, I guess it's similar to Carol. Uh, if you've ever taken a programming class and they used Carol the robot um, to teach you just uh, programming concepts uh, similar to that. So also we've got Python, we've got Midori, which is kind of a lightweight uh, web browser. And uh, you can kind of get an idea of the speed of the Pi, or lack thereof rather. Let's just pull up Google real quick. So there you go. And then let's just go into the file manager and uh, look around for just a moment see what's on our hard drive see what's in applications and uh, let's see that's the same thing we kind of have on the desktop got programmings also same thing we got on the desktop internet and we've got a couple different types of web browser I put the XVNC um, x11 vnc server in there and uh all right so nothing too terribly interesting in here at the moment uh let's fire up the terminal real quick and uh, i want to see if Perl is installed and it is by default so all right well uh, took a quick look around the desktop so you can hopefully get an idea of what the Pi is going to be like uh, using the graphical user interface. So let's um, shut the Pi down real quick and I want to swap cards uh, and show you open ELEC booting on the Pi. You shut the Pi down by using the HALT command but we need to be super user for that so sudo space HALT and now that the Pi is shut down, we can switch out the Raspbian card that I was using earlier for my card with Open Elec on it. So now that we have the new card in, let's plug it in and start booting up Open Elec. So as you can see, you can pretty quickly change out cards and be up and running with a different OS like Open Elec. Uh, with XBMC on top of it pretty quickly. But hey, you know, that's it for this one. Um, just wanted to kind of get you guys up and running uh, quickly. But we'll be covering more specific uses of the Pi in the future tutorials. So stay tuned. And as always, thank you for watching.